Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA video pop quiz for you here today. We're going to be on the live equipment in about half a minute after we take a look at a multiple choice practice exam question. And of course, as always, my questions are the hated and dreaded choose all that apply. So get ready and let's go ahead and get to today's question. Which of these statements is true of the interface whose IP address is used as the OSPF RID? A, it doesn't have to be OSPF enabled. B, it has to be OSPF enabled. C, it must be configured with the router ID command. D, a loopback's IP address will be preferred over a physical interface's IP address, regardless of numeric value or whether OSPF is enabled on either. Whew. Need a breather after that one. Let's bring up the live equipment and take a look. And if you want to pause the video for a moment or two, or a minute or two, think about your answer, that's fine. But let's go ahead and call up the routers and see what's going on here. I'm on router one, and I simply ran show IP OSPF neighbor. And we've got two neighbor IDs. Now take note of these, because one of them seems like a pretty small IP address, 2222, and the other is 172.23.23.3. So we're going to go to those routers, see what's up there, and also we're going to see exactly how to identify what the local router's uh, RID is. Because show IP OSPF neighbor is going to show you the RID for the remote routers, but not for your local one. So let's go down to router 2. Now notice that router 2, the next top IP address to get to that one was 172.12.123.2. But again, you know, so why isn't that number here? Well, let's go to router 2, do a quick show config. We'll just go from top to bottom. Notice there is a loopback. It's the all twos address. It's the way I like to do it in my labs. It's a good organizational tool. And we got some other stuff here, but you can also see in the OSPF config that that network is not OSPF enabled. So it is true that a router or the interface's IP address that is used as the OSPF RID does not have to be OSPF enabled. So we know then that B has to be false and has to be OSPF enabled. So, let's see, can I hit enter there? With the, yeah, I thought that was going to botch it up. Okay, so we'll just get rid of it that way. Now, it must be configured with the router ID command. That is false. Now, I'm going to show you really quickly. I've got a couple of videos on YouTube about this, but just a quick reminder about that command. If you want to set the RID manually, it's a good skill to have for your exam, too. You simply use the router ID command. And if I wanted to set it to all 22s, I could. And believe it or not, there are no options with this command. But... You know what's coming if you've seen this command before. When you use the router ID command, this is one of those rare CCNA commands where you've actually got to reload the router or clear your OSPF processes in order for it to take effect. And if you clear your processes, you know what's going to happen here, right? You're going to get a big fat prompt, reset all processes, and the default answer is no. Word to the wise, whenever the default answer to a question is no, you need to step back and make sure it's something you really want to do because what you're about to do is tear down all of your OSPF adjacencies. So it does not have to be configured with the router ID command. So what about this last choice? A loopback's IP address will be preferred over a physical interface's IP address. That is absolutely true. A loopback is always going to be preferred. Now, what about that router 3? Let's go over to router 3, take a quick look. And here you'll see that we don't have any loopback interfaces. If we did, the config and the IP address would show right up here at the top. And also, you can run show IP OSPF. This is a great troubleshooting command, too. Gives you a lot of good information. But at the very top, the first thing it's going to do is tell you what routing process number you're using and what the local router's OSPF RID is. So there's a lot of little details we got to know with the OSPF RID for the exam. But once you get the rules straight and you get used to that part about it doesn't have to be OSPF enabled, I, I had trouble wrapping my head around that when I first started studying because uh, it's counterintuitive. But we saw for ourselves on live equipment it doesn't have to be OSPF enabled. And you also got a quick refresher on how to reset that and what's going to happen when you try. Be sure to join me out on Twitter, our YouTube channel, well over a million views and approaching 6,000 subscribers, our blog and Facebook, and we've got plenty of free books coming for you starting in May 2012 on Amazon.com as well. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.